Hi guys, John with you again, and we're doing an unboxing. We're doing an unboxing of the uh, Tamiya Japan Type 1 self repelled gun with six figures. It's in 135th scale, and it's uh, my entry into Matt Hill's uh, Pacific World War II Pacific group build. And um, it's a classic old Tamiya kit. You know me, I love the old kits. Uh, not because they're cheaper and I'm a skin print or anything like that it's just that uh, I don't have a very large amount of money to spend on kits and if I can get two you know older to me kits which I've never made which I haven't made so therefore you know uh, when I've gone through all the old kits then I put more probably start buying some of the newer kits but the but the prices are charging bloody ridiculous bloody ridiculous you only get three kits of this vintage uh, for one of the newer kits. Now I know the quality you're paying for, you, mean, you pay for what you get. But as I have proved in the past, with some of these older, older kits, you can get a fabulous, fabulous result that is second to none and on comparison with uh, some of the newer kits, you can't really tell the difference. So without any further ado let's get stuck in we'll uh, have a look at what's in the box and the box art and all the usual rubbish that goes on with these unboxings um cover art it's actually quite nice gives a nice depiction of the uh, the self-propelled gun itself and the figures that you come with it gives you the rank markings for the japanese army Yes, it tells you it's 2013. Uh, if you watch Dutch modeling, does uh, absolutely uh, fabulous uh, unboxing of this, where he kind of at one stage I thought he was going to get the kit and chuck it out the window because he keeps going on about you know 2013 on the box, and uh, does the only thing inside it from 2013 are the decals, all the uh, molds as you will see, they're from 1975, 76, and 77. Um, I mean, I checked this out in scale mates before I, I, I purchased it, just to have a look at it and looked at some reviews and said, yeah, okay, I'll go off and I'll get this kit and I'll make a nice job of it. Because nobody could actually give it a bad bad mouth at the kit itself. Um, even Dutch Modeling, he was saying, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, the kit itself is grand. It's, it, it's nice, but it's not a 2013 kit. Um, right, we start off, we get the uh, lower hull. In, we, we, Let's just go through the bags first. We get the uh, two bags. We've got three, four, five bags, I suppose. We've got our uh, plastic tracks, which are the, as far as I know, are the miltable ones, not the, uh, not the um, uh, glueable type. We get an instruction sheet in. English and German, giving you step by step instructions on how to make the kit. We get the exact same thing in um, in Japanese, giving you step to step instructions on how to make the kit. We also get the paint guide and how to make the figures. The four of the figures that are with the set, the other two figures uh, instructions are in the instruction part of it which tell you how to make the kit. And we get our little thing of decals. Now, bloody staples. Everybody goes mental about the staples. Oh, it might scratch your parts. I don't give it a bloody toss. I don't think they'll do that much damage to them, but the, the only thing about them is they are bloody well annoying. That's the only thing about the staples, I will say. Um, right, our decals. We get a set of decals for the uh, tank itself. Now, if we can let that zoom into that there, give it a few seconds. There we go. As you see, they're 1977 on the uh, the decal. But that's the that is not when they were printed. That's when they were. Uh, that's the oh, the patent on these stickers. You know what I mean. They're obviously newer stickers, do you know what I mean? Because otherwise, if they were reading 1977 stickers, they could be gone fairly yellow by now. Um, that's just the patent on, this, on the stick, on the, uh, the decals. Let me go back. 
back into my little bag here. Right. Now, and this one here, if I just give it a second to zoom in. If John holds his hand steady and turn this up the right way, or Halloween will be going mental. Alright, you get rank markings from left hand and coronal right down to private. There we go. And the date on them is 2013. So that's like I said, that, that's the new part <laughs> in the kit. <laughs> that's the only thing from 2013. Everything else is from the 70s. So um, that's the, uh, shall we say, that's the, the instructions and the decals. Right, what's left? We'll have a look at the tracks. Uh, they're the multiple type tracks. I have never had a problem with them. Detail wise, they're actually detailed on the inside as well. If you look, let that zoom in there. Let it adjust. Come on, adjust. Adjust. As you see, there's a little bit of detail on it, and that's the inside. And there's the, the outside. There's a nice bit of detail on those. Pop it through. Melt them there with a screwdriver. Does a fabulous job, and you can get sag and all if you need sag with them. It's it, it uses super glue and glue them onto rollers and things like that. So let's have a look at the, uh, the sprues themselves. First off, here we've got a sprue with or two figures. No, let's see, we're looking at the. Faces, I'll zoom in on the faces and then give it a few seconds to adjust itself. Uh, it doesn't like my hand for some weird reason. Um, yeah, there we go. I mean, they're not bad. They're not. Uh, they're not super, shall we say? Um, give it a few seconds. Here we go, come on. <laughs> anyway, there's the uh, the inside of the uh, the cab, shall we say, because it's a self-propelled gun and it's an open open type turret, shall we say, if you want to call it a turret. There's our two-piece barrel. There's, uh, I think, there's the sides off the gun and a few other bits and pieces all seem to be nicely molded I can't see any problems I can't see any flash so far um, a couple of molds seems need to be kind of scraped off and stuff but you know these older kits yeah they do need a little bit of work but not major you know they'll, they'll fit without the work involved in them. so therefore they're good for starters you know and give them a little bit of work and you can make a fabulous fabulous little uh, bit of care and attention and some good painting and weathering and away you go. Right we've got uh, our poly caps. We have four poly caps there. Oh, sorry, eight poly caps. Should I say two and two. A four and four. Right we've got uh, <laughs> we've got our, our wheels. Oh, this is the back is it? Yep, that's the, these are the backs of the wheels so they're not quite that bad fronts of the wheels. I'm not seeing any uh, nasty ejector pin marks on wheels. I am checking, believe me you, I am checking, uh, but I'm not seeing any. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, there, and inside, even right on the inside of those ones, we don't have any ejector pin marks or anything like that. You've got dirty fingernails, John, but you've no ejector pin marks. Right, uh, we've got our, our uh, transmission cover. We've got some um, grills and things for the back. I'd say there's suspension springs, suspension mounts and things. We've got a little machine gun there. Not bad molded actually. We'll have a look at the little machine gun. They gave it a few seconds. Let's be, be patient with it. And no matter how patient 
session to him, but it still doesn't want to. But there we go. Yep. There you see that that's that's actually quite nicely molded indeed. Um, nice, nice rivet detail there on that uh, on that cover piece. Those grills are quite nice as well. But like I said, I haven't seen any flash or um, awkward ejector pin marks yet. So, so far so good. And that's basically uh, all the add-on pieces. All we've got left then is our, our upper and lower hull. Um, I think hmm, another sprue left or something. Right, we've got, yeah, we've got a suspension already um, already on the hull. Nothing at all underneath, but we're going to have it done. We're not going to see underneath anyway. You know, the modern kits go into all this detail about underneath. How many times are you going to show a kit or show a model you know, do something where you're going to actually pick it up to look at the bottom of it? Um, very, very few in my opinion. But uh, I mean, I've done them. I have them there. It's on the T90. It's beautiful underneath. But um, when you stick it on a dial, you know, it, 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 it loses its beauty, shall we say, when it's not seen. Um, there's our lower hull, very, very nicely moulded indeed. Like I said, it is one piece, um, you know, uh, if we, we, we zoom into that there, we see that this was moulded. There we go. Whoa, in 1975, I was 10. So, you know, it's not, an, it's not a new kit, not by any stretch of the imagination. 42 years old, this kit. Well, the mouldings are. That doesn't mean that the plastic, these are the actual ones that were, were made back in 1975. Do you know what I mean? You mean they probably were made in 2013. Um, or even late, or might even have been made later. But um, it just uses the old mould. That's all that means. There's uh, our um, covery part. Uh, engine deck. There we go. The whole lot. The, not just the engine deck. The gun deck. The engine deck is the back bit, and the gun sits in here. And there's our front driver and uh, co-driver. Whatever. And finally, we've got our figure set. <coughs> and we'll have a look at these. These are the, uh, the five, or the other four figures that come with it. Um, we'll have a look at them now. Uh, this is the, uh, we got? 1976 they came from. This is the, the canteens. Now there is a bit of flash there in the canteens, nice big clean up to be done in them, all right. Um, bayonets, they're not too bad. Rifles already have the bayonets on, so we've got, yeah, we've got two scabbards there without bayonets, and we've got two bayonets in their scabbards. That's why these ones here look a bit, uh, look a bit bare. It's just that the uh, bayonet isn't in there. Got the Japanese rifles. We've got the uh, officer's sword. I won't call it a samurai sword because it'll probably I'll probably be uh, corrected for for it. Um, probably isn't a samurai sword. Probably got some other type name. Um, not up in my Japanese swords. Uh, there's the, the figures themselves. You know, um, they are what they are. Um, it's very, very hard to see when they're at this state. If you know what I mean, it's it's a case of how will they build up, how do they, how much filling they need around the, the shoulders and the waist and stuff like that. Will they go in? Do they need any? Will they need any filling and and things like that? Um, what that is, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, it's the uh, the hats. <laughs> Added up the other way around. It's the uh, hat, the uh, the flappy bit at the back, whatever that's called. A little bit of flesh, but nothing that can't be cleaned off. 
So we found a little bit of flash on the figures. I just put the figures back into my bag actually, keep them separate. Otherwise, when I'm building the kit, I'll be, I'll be coursing the amount of times I'll be taking out the figures. So that's an unboxing for the uh, for that lovely little kit, lads. Um, like I said, it's my entry to Matt Hill's uh, Pacific Group Build. Get something together for yourselves, lads, and enter. Um, just do a video for Matt and stick it up, I presume. That should be okay. So, uh, Matt, there you go. And, uh, oh, excuse me, anybody else that's interested in just this vehicle alone and things, that's the unboxing. Let's stay tuned to the channel. I will be doing build updates at various stages, and I will be doing a die off for this. It'll only be a small die, probably about the size of the box. It's only a small vehicle, and there's only four other figures apart from 